little by little, I'm going to meet you in the middle. We're going to talk today about a very important spiritual concept or spiritual principle, let's say. Um, it's, it's called the middle, the middle path. Uh, in Buddha, in Buddhism, it's called the middle way. In, in Greek philosophy, it was called the golden mean. And we mainly know it these days by the term moderation, nothing to excess. Um, and this is a, a, a very useful principle to keep in mind in terms of uh, our, our lives and our health and well-being and our relationships with other people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, generally, as we know, um, sometimes it helps to go to extremes. <laughs> like, you know, um, if we get out of balance, if we go to one extreme, we might have to kind of balance it out by going to the other extreme for a while. But we will find ourselves little by little getting more and more into the middle, right? The middle ground, or you could say, let's, let's say the center, because sometimes being stuck in the middle is not considered to be such a great thing. But if you say being in the center, uh, I think that maybe makes a little bit more sense uh, to a lot of people. Um, of course, being a centrist, like in politics, you know, some people don't, don't go for that. <laughs> uh, you would think that being being in the center in politics would be a good thing, but but not everyone sees it that way. And it it's true for everything. You know that that um, people on on the different wings, so to speak, the left or the right uh, of the center, will tend to um, maybe um, not think the center is such a great place to be. Um, I did a, I did another video where I I talked about atheism and theism and agnosticism and I and I try to make a case that agnosticism is like being in the center you know you you, you, you take the position that um, well I can't say that I'm an atheist because I don't know does does God exist is there a God is there a, is there a, some kind of um, supernatural power or powers at work in the universe uh, I don't know. And I can't say that I, um, I, I do believe that. And I can't say that I, I don't believe that because I don't know. And that would be the agnostic position. Um, sometimes the agnostic position becomes, you can't know. <laughs> There's no way you could possibly know. And I don't want to go into that right now, but I do want to say that I think agnosticism may be the the way of wisdom because uh most of us don't know <laughs> if we really look at it we 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 can't make an absolute judgment either way and a lot of atheists i've noticed i've listened to a lot of atheist talk um on on youtube you know and in other places and the more honest ones will say well i don't really know <laughs> you know i'm open i'm open to um being proven wrong Sometimes you get theists saying that too. Um, but um, anyway, the Buddha, um, well, let's just first just say that there's a Sanskrit word. The Sanskrit word for middle is madhya. And that's where we get our word middle. Um, so, and, and, and don't forget that the Sanskrit is, is part of this language family called the Indo-European language family. And the Indo-European language family includes Greek and Latin and English. So a lot of our English words go back, you know, you can, you can trace them back through Greek, Latin, Sanskrit, and maybe even older languages. I don't know, right? You know, I don't know all the languages that are included in the Indo-European language family. Um, some people say that Sanskrit is the oldest language. Um, and that everything goes back to Sanskrit. I'm not sure if that's true, and I'm sure sco there are scholars that would say that there were older languages um, that that preceded Sanskrit. Um, but let's leave that aside for the moment. But just to make the point that the, the word middle comes from that Sanskrit word madhya. And 
in Buddhism, you have the middle way, right? And it's called, this is in Pali. In Pali, well, let's say Sanskrit first. Sanskrit, it's called Madhya, Madhyama Pratipada. And in Pali, it's called Maji, Majima Patipada. Very similar, slightly different. Pali is the language of, of Buddhism in general, and, and Sanskrit is the language of Hinduism. Um, so in Buddhism, you have this idea that Buddha tried extreme asceticism. He tried, he tried to do all this extreme fasting and meditating and, and uh, basically denying the needs of the flesh, denying the physical um, material materiality, uh, and uh, he realized, he finally realized it didn't work, and, and that there was some middle ground, and that that was where this idea comes from ultimately, um, and this is part of, let's see. In Buddhism, I, I did a video uh, talking about the, the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path of the Buddha. So this is an important part of that. Um, so let's just say, let's just read. Um, I'll read one thing that the Buddha said uh, according to a uh, one text. This is the Dhamma Chaka Pavatana Sutta or Sutra. And he says, Monks, these two extremes ought not to be practiced by one who has gone forth from the household life. There is an addiction to indulgence of sense pleasure, which is low course, the way of ordinary people, unworthy and unprofitable. And there is an addiction to self-mortification, which is painful, unworthy and unprofitable. Avoiding both these extremes, the perfect one has realized the middle path. It gives vision, gives knowledge, and leads to calm, to insight, to enlightenment, and to nibbana or nirvana. That's nibbana is the Pali way of saying that. And what is that middle path realized by the tathagata? It is the noble eightfold path and nothing else, namely right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. All right. So, so he at the end there he talked about what the eight parts of the Eightfold Path, the, nable, the Noble Eightfold Path. But his point was also to say, you on the one side you have hedonism, and the other side you have, um, what's the, what's the uh, asceticism, I guess, right? You have the hedonist, which is eat, drink, and be merry, live for today, for tomorrow you should die, <laughs> you, might, you might die. And the ascetic who denies the flesh thinking that they will, they will somehow find reality through doing that. And um, I think the idea is, is that both of those things make, they, they give power to the illusion, right? They give power uh, to the flesh, so to speak, or give power to the body and to, the, and to, and to materiality or, or the physical. So like if you're hedonist, you, you indulge the senses, you, you, you try to enjoy as much as you can on a physical level. Uh, and if you're an ascetic, you try to deny as much as you can, but you're still very caught up in the physical because you're denying it so much, right? So, you, so the idea is to find the middle, the middle ground, you know, where you're not, where you can enjoy physical pleasures but you're not attached to them. If, if you're, you know, you could, you could push physical pleasures away, but you still might be attached, right? You still might, it's like people that, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use any specific things. I'm thinking of something specific, specifically right now, but te generally people that, um, deny things and are very against things are the people that that actually have a secret desire for those things. And you can think in terms of sexuality, you know, the people that push away certain forms of sexuality and, and, and judge them hard and et cetera, et cetera, oftentimes they, they secretly have some kind of 
hang up about those things. So um, anyway, the thing I want to say is that you find this idea, because I've been also talking about the Bhagavad Gita, and Krishna and Buddha are very similar in what they were saying. You know, I, I, I want to just bring that up, is that they, they probably lived around the same time, although according to tradition, Krishna was earlier than Buddha. But I think in reality, um, if you look at when the Bhagavad Gita most likely was composed, it was around the same time as Buddha. Um, so they're saying very similar things. Like Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, yoga is not for the one who eats too much or eats too little, sleeps too much or sleeps too little, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's, he's emphasizing the middle path as well. And, uh, you know, just to bring up Greek philosophy again, Aristotle, I believe Plato as well, but Aristotle definitely brought in the idea of the golden mean and everything in moderation, nothing to excess. Um, and in the, in the A Course in Miracles, you also find this idea is uh, that if you, for example, if you, <clears throat> it's all about um, not giving energy to the ego, right? If you, if you try to kill your ego, let's put it this way, if you try to kill your ego, that would be going to an extreme, right? You don't need to kill your ego. You, you can just, you can just um, see the ego for what it is and choose against the ego, make, make choices that are not according to the ego, and the ego will just dissolve of and by itself. It will just, it will just fade into the background more and more, and your true self will come more and more to the fore, right? So, so the, 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 this is this, this idea. And, uh, you know, I think if you look at, at, at these spiritual traditions, you'll probably see this idea a lot, this idea of finding the middle, finding the, finding the center, the middle place. And uh, take that for what, um, what it's worth for you. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, in, well, let's just say, too, in modern, in, the, in modern society, in the modern world, we tend to decry extremism of, of any kind, right? We, in general, um, the, the general consensus, I think, I think, I think is that extremism is, um, is not such a good thing. Whether it's extreme politics or, or uh, I mean, there are, there's extreme sports. <laughs> uh, I guess that doesn't have a bad rap, but, uh, but obviously extreme sports can be very um, extreme and I've seen people die, you know. I guess that's a choice that people make when they do those sports, but, but um, you know, um, no guts, no glory, I guess. But, uh, but in the case of, of spirituality, I think finding the, the middle ground is, uh, can be very helpful. And, and we talk about balance, you know, I think the other point, the other word I want to bring in here is, is balance, harmony and balance, living in harmony, living in balance, um, finding the balance between too much and too little right? Um, knowing when enough is enough. Knowing when, uh, you know, if you eat something more, it's not going to be healthy anymore. You know, it might be great food, but if you eat more of it, it might be harmful. And uh, if, if you have a food that you wouldn't normally eat because you don't think it's healthy, a little bit of it, it's not going to kill you, right? Um, <clears throat> so that, that's just a a little example, but you can apply this to, to everything. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I think that's, that's all I want to say about, about all this, but I think it's a very important concept in Buddhism. It's definitely an important concept in Hinduism. And I think if you, if you look in, uh, the different religious and spiritual traditions, you'll find this idea cropping up a lot. So, uh, thank you for tuning in. Namaste. <laughs>